Oh, hey guys. That's a long ways down. Uh, what? Hmm. I probably should have died there. Fall damage. That's what we need. So in this little simple scene, I have three platforms, two capsules. There are three ways to kind of really do fall damage. We have rigid body, which this would work for 2D and 3D. And, you know, it helps if I hit play. If I was in play mode, this would, that would have been a lot cooler to see, but now you have to wait. So there's, you know, physics, right? Rigid body. Over here, we have a character controller, which is also translate, which, you know, is. Also not being very cool. So let's. I'm going to take the simple move real quick and just dump it over here so I don't look like a complete crazy person. So, character controller. Alright, take the character controller and they also fall. So we have character controller and rigid body. And the third is... Yeah, ow, ow, yeah. So now, <clears throat> we should probably have some sort of indication, and it'd be nice to do more than, say, one. So I'm going to create a little animator controller, nothing nothing crazy. Uh, I'm going to call it the falling bean, and on... We have this idle and fall light, fall hard. I'm going to use triggers. We'll call it fall light and fall hard. And there's going to be a third one, but I'm not going to do animation for it. So I'm just going to say if we fall light. We're going to go there, and if we fall hard, then we're going to go there. Fall light, fall hard. So then let's take this, bring these like that. All right, so essentially now, uh, just just with that, we should be able to now, if I hit fall light, we get this little blip, and we get fall hard, we get a much bigger blip. And the fall hard, we should probably, you know what, I'm going to extend that one out. Could almost duplicate it and play it backwards as well. Might be a little more clear, but it, it might might work. I mean, it's it's visual. You you mean you'll 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 definitely see it. So the, the third one is we're going to create actually an empty. Let's bring it over here somewhere so we can see it, and then let's add. I don't know. We'll put some spheres, and not a sphere collider. I mean, uh, I meant, I meant actual spheres. We'll put it down to like point ones. Add a rigid body. You know, actually put it inside this thing. And I'm just going to duplicate it a few times.
There we go. So what is this going to do? This is just going to FSM. Let's just add explosion. Because, you know, you can't do anything fun without having an explosion, right? So I should probably, yeah, let's get a little point in here. That guy there. And then we can get position. This will just make everything look cool. And get position of this little game object. And that's going to be our vector. And we'll use that as the center. And the force we'll use like, I don't know, 50 at 3 with, I don't know, 10 impulse. Call it good. Right, so technically if I now hit play, it should just explode. It should. I might be a liar. It exploded. It went crazy. That's that's for sure. Obviously a little excessive. I'm gonna bring this down to a much more reasonable apparently explosion because it's not a nuclear weapon. Even that's a little excessive. So let's bring that down a little farther. Let's go one and 0.6, I suppose. No, 2.5. So there. I'm just going to prefab that and delete him. So these little these little guys just have a basic, simple uh, controller to them. Just a, a move and a jump right and like there really isn't much to these things and we want to do fall damage All right so if I hit play now oh what do we have we have some sort of issue Did I not? Oh, you know what? I, I put like a little cheap grounding system on them. Like I, I made these things pretty poor. I might have messed those up with the animation, I think. We'll see. Yes, I did. I did, I did, I did. And that's just due to... Uh, <coughs> Uh, dun, 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 dun. uh, the animator, cause I, I didn't put it as a child. So it's, it's taking the position I mean, I could always, I suppose I sh could be able to alter those. Yeah. See, I, I did position. So you know what? Cause if you ever do that, like if you ever, if you ever making anything, like we have idle, so I got scale and the land hard, land land light. For some reason, I put position in there. We don't want position. We only want scale. For the scale should be fine for moving it. Yeah. So, I mean, it could, because I had the pos position in there, it wasn't letting me move. So now it can move. Right, so now we can do all this fun stuff. So, 2D or 3D it really doesn't matter uh, if because you're if you're doing rigid body, the methods are literally exactly the same. And all it is is if we look into our movement, we have uh, um, we're getting an axis. I have a jump key. We're testing if we're grounded, and we're using set velocity to move. That's it. That's all we do. Right. So if I hit 
and we watch this thing in action and the character control is very close to the same thing right <clears throat> I can move and if I hit space I jump we do the jump we go into a falling state so what we got to do here let's get position actually we don't even need to do that you know what this is the beauty part about rigid bodies is because we can just get speed and you have get speed 2d as well if you're doing 2d so speed and we can do this one every frame so when we land we don't want to just go back instead we want to float uh, let's see if we can do a float switch we have to do a float compare it's less than i know if a float switch will work if it was an inch you're a little different with the switches so we'll have to say three if we are less and i've actually i have no idea how fast we're going to be moving we have to do a little bit of testing to figure that out right so our speed is zero So on a normal jump, uh, it looks like about nine we got to. So if we are, say, less than five, let's do nothing. Absolutely nothing. We're not going to do any animations or nothing. And if we are, say, less than um, 11, We'll go small, and if we go small, all we're going to do is set animator, trigger, and we're going to go light, and then, and then we go into here. And then if we are, say, less than, uh, we'll say 20, again, we're going to have to test this and figure out what values we'll actually really need here to make this work but that's part of the process I suppose then we want to fall hard and beyond that if we're less than well from here you can just whatever you know you die so now we are going to create this guy at us and then we are going to destroy self make sure to put him underneath so now just with that <clears throat> we should have if we jump and we land we had just a light fall there and if we go this way and we say jump, we had a bigger hit. And we died. We exploded into our parts. Just based on, so I, I must have actually got pretty lucky with guessing on the variables here. So all we're doing is we're just capturing our, our speed up here while we're in our fall state. But this will see I also made the I also made like so you have the jumping, but then you also have the actual falling. So this this will work just on falling. Right? So if you are say over here and you don't jump, you just fall. Right? You have that little bit of uh it, it'll still play those animations. Again, that one killed us. But that's kind of how you set that up. Or just with with the physics, right? So this is this is why this works for 2D or 3D. It really doesn't matter. We're either get speed or get speed 2D. That's it. It's really all we're doing. So when we land, we say, okay, whoa, 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 stop. We've landed. What is our speed? What did it end up at? Right? And as it goes, then you say you have your switch. You could also use the float compares and put in, as long as you stack the compares 
in order. Right? Like if you were to compare speed and say, is it less than 10? You know, go small. It doesn't even need to be every frame. Or is speed less than, you know, 20? Go large. And it'll, because this one's on top, like if, if you almost think it like you're pulling a, pouring a cup of water, you come in and it reads this guy and if it passes this, it's going to read this guy. And if it passes this, it'll con continue on. If if you read this guy and it and it like I said, if it passes, it just runs out this door, right? It never sees this one. So which is which is why you can you can get away with running a bunch of flow compares if you want. Uh, but you don't have to. You can also do the switch. So that is physics. It said networks two D or three D doesn't matter same principle so the con character controller is a little different because we can't get speed speed isn't a thing for us right so in our logic it's again it's quite simple we have axes simple move we have jump and we're checking if we're grounded um, if we hit the jump we do the jump with a jump command uh, if we just do the fall, I do a simple move with with a no move vector, so so that we can abuse the the gravity system, and then we ch and we check if we're grounded, right? So we fall and we we land, right? Which is all cool and all, but how do we do the fall thing if we can't get speed? So <clears throat> one thing you could do is, is, is you, can, you can just check distance, right? The minute we fall, when we first fall, we can just get our Y position. And then when we land, we get the Y position again and we do a comparison, right? And that's the distance we have fallen. So the other thing is, is that, <clears throat> I mean, if you want to be a little more accurate, like if we pop back over here and we say, you know what, we kind of like this system. I'm going to copy that system and just bring it over. Right. But we, we can't get speed. There is no speed. But what can we do? is uh, we get uh, a distance and a time, more or less. So, for example, if we fall, we would want to set float value. Said now, or, or you could just do this purely off a of distance. Yeah, it's a little easier that way. So we're going to set time to zero float add put it underneath the, this guy this is the top add time we're gonna add one per frame every second so we're getting one per second All right now the other thing we want to do is get position uh, of our owner we only need the Y so start Y And now that we have the start Y, when we land, all we got to do is get position again, end Y, and now we can do a float uh, actually I guess we really don't even need, well yeah, we should probably do a float operator. Or float subtract, I guess, or float add. So if we take the start y and the end y and we subtract them, we have a distance fell. 
Oh, make sure that's above that, or that's going to cause us issues. So if we have a distance that we fell, but we also have a time. So it looks like you can just run it off a distance and then adjust your values down here to, to run off the distance. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we take our distance fell and the speed, or not speed, um, and time, and we divide it, we have speed. Right? <clears throat> Did distance over time. So now we have uh, do nothing can go up there. And we should essentially have that same thing off of the fall. We haven't done the jump yet. All right, so we fall and we land. And we just got a small one. Because as, as you see, we get our position right at the start. We, we're at negative two. And we get our position at the end. I don't believe those numbers. And we subtract those. We have barely anything. Well, that doesn't make much sense. We should have had a lot more distance than that. So here we have a starting of four. Oh, it's because it hops. Ah, okay. All right. So you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna so it doesn't do that little hop. I'm gonna stick a next frame event in there. Let's let the logic run first. Because that's, which is kind of one of the downsides, is uh, <coughs> the character control. With the way I did the grounding. Like, if normally, if I was to build a character, character control and use the character controller itself, I wouldn't use the grounding action. I would, I would use a grounding actual test with raycast. Yeah, which is, which you know what, I think we'll do. I mean, this one's a pretty simple grounding, but whatever. All right, this one, all it is is a ray cast down. It's literally all it's doing. So then we can say, okay, he's landed. And then let's get rid of is grounding and just do an FSM bool test. Which is on the ecosystem, the FSM bool test. Or, or you just get FSM and test it. Either or, I suppose. So if it's false, we fall. Right, so then up here, I mean, that land's probably fine. Uh, let's, let's put it in here. Let's replace that one. If it's true, we have landed. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're just, it's weird, those those grounding things. They're, because they, they have to have force to register for grounding because it's based off of movement. And, I don't know. There we go. So, our fell distance was six. The time was you know, 1.1, so the speed was 5.5. Fair enough. Can't complain about that, right? And vice versa, I mean, here, if we've landed... Now, in the in the controller jump, you can do the fall distance. It, it can gather that stuff for you. But, you know, why bother? But we would also need this. So let's copy that. Paste it up here. And that's it. We should now be able to, and we're still we're running all the same values as we did with the physics because really it's you know, distance and time, right? 
we have a do nothing. We might have to adjust those, obviously, a bit. And let's bring this up. And that was a small one. All right, so let's just bring those down. Let's go with lesson two and lesson eight and lesson twelve. Like I said those they're all numbers you kind of got to play with. Figure out what's good for your your project you're working on, right? So we do a normal jump, and it was a nothing. Do a jump like that. We got a small. Oh, that was a big one. Not big enough. We want to see our little guy explode. Explode, Demi. Nothing. Oh, we're on the edge there. <laughs> and we go, and here's the big one. Oh, it was just a big one. It was just under eight. All right, so that one, we're going to go four and seven. There we go. That should do us up. Said like with the time, like you don't need to bring the time in if you want to just use the distance. It's totally, totally plausible. And he died. So there we have it. Two different falls, and the effects and how that kind of plays into going into the animator as well, I suppose. Whether you use physics or you kind of develop whatever system you need for this, right? So that we got the time in there, but you don't have to. Like if you want just the position, uh, then we're just looking at your, your distance. How far did you fall? That's it. Which comes up, like, I mean, if you look at that, I mean, just a normal jump and land. You know, the distance was virtually nothing. Because I'm also comparing it from the start to the end, right? And if you really want to push things into a different perspective of uh, of falling, so that was a distance of six. Uh, it's a little harder to do on the character controller, but when, you, when you're dealing with physics, right, we have this, we have, we're going upwards. Um, from here, if you, well, say you come over to here and you get velocity, this is also a great way to do, uh, your, your animation changes. If we get the velocity on the Y, every frame, and then float compare if your current y is say uh, let's, let's go negative 0.1 you can probably even go higher than that uh, if it's less than that we're, we're going into a falling state right so that's it which is also a great place I mean if you have an animation where you, you have a you have a jumping kind of upwards animation and you want to know when to curve an arc to do the jumping. Like you're kind of going into the falling animation all of a sudden. Like if you watch on him now, as we jump up, he goes here. Oh, okay, that was a little low, I suppose. Negative uh, 0.5. So yeah, see how he kind of jumps up? And, it, and he, it kind of waits until he's in that falling state. Right? Which 
which would which would obviously alter your all of your values too depending on how you're doing it i suppose but it's it's a great way to uh to do animations if you if you have like i said if you have that kind of jumping upwards to the arc going downwards all right so that so that's all you know great the animations we got the different events set up what if you actually had health you want to lose health though actual damage well the first thing you'll need is, is some sort of health fsm <clears throat> this will be the same on both of them so i'll just copy and paste it once it's over so you might have <clears throat> you know uh some sort of damage system already kind of coming in and doing its stuff uh what i like to do is make another another one like another what kind of way in <clears throat> And then this would probably have a get event property. We'll call it fall, I suppose. Why not? Even float or int, it really doesn't matter. Maybe I'll use floats. Call that damage. And then float subtract. Well, obviously, we need a variable called health subtract our damage and then you know the float compare are we dead at the end of that you'd have almost the same kind of idea what would be in your normal everyday damage system if we're equal we are dead if we're less than we are dead if that we're alive right dead and alive so we'd we'd need a starting health system now <clears throat> i'll just do it off of like a 50 but i mean if you want to do like say a heart system like a the old school link system or something you know that's totally plausible so <clears throat> the actual health i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it over to the other guy because they're going to be the exact same systems so we we now we, we have this stuff so if you have like the basic heart system like you have you know okay i have five hearts from here uh okay we're doing nothing maybe from here we set event property called fall it's going to be type float and we can just you know if you want to do one you know one two and death or three or four whatever the case may be you can do that uh, the other thing you also could do if, if you don't have a heart system, you actually have a health system like we have, say, 50, is we have speed. So, okay, well, that's cool. We can just float operator it. And we can take our, say, speed and multiply it by a fall damage modifier and it comes out with our we'll call it damage let's put that up here so the data we could now send damage and our, our multiplier right now you can change this based on all sorts of different things but let's say it's uh i don't know 0.5 sure whatever and now it sends all that over copy that stick it over here copy that stick it over here i guess it doesn't matter because we're destroying the character but if i don't destroy the character we can see it so let's copy that and go over to the capsule with the character controller and i'll paste it in here Right? And then it's, it's kind of this, this same idea. doesn't matter. <clears throat> like I said, now you, you can adjust that, that fall modifier and make it 10 times. I don't know. It, you can do a per percent of your health too, right? So if we look now, oh, we forgot to send the event. Oh my God, what a noob thing to do. 
after all that. We set the event. We never bothered sending the event. So send the event to self health fall. That needs to go in all of those. On both capsules. Alright, so now, <clears throat> now that we actually send the actual damage over instead of just holding on to it like we're well, fearing for our life or something. Alright, so now we go and boop, we do our animations, we can do sound effects, all that sorts of fun stuff. But we go over to the health and we can see uh, on the physics we took, you know, 7.4 damage. Right? And if you want to round it up before you send it over, you can do that too. All right? So we subtract it. We're still alive. We took our damage. You know, if you look on to the character controller one, same idea. We only we only took 1.2 damage because the the difference in the calculations and stuff. But there there you go. Right? And if it's and if you go big. Well, we should see, of course they, you know, played their thing, but we didn't actually destroy them this time. And we see now uh, the damage on that one was seven. Oh, he hasn't, he hasn't hit yet. He's the same. On this guy, though, uh, it was much higher, well, compared to the last one. And this guy, he hits... I think he messed up because I think I think the other one, I think the other one screwed him up when he came down, and he exploded and shot his things upwards. I think it slowed his velocity. Luckiest capsule in the world. Let's watch this guy's health come down. All right, so there was a seven point four. There was a 12.5, right? So the damage is <coughs> changing based on that amount. I said that, that's that's with a mo modifier of 0.5, and you can set that however you, you want. And if you want to run different modifiers in each kind of area, you can do that too, or run it on a on a animation curve. It's another way if you want more of a dynamic system. <coughs> 